this thing has limited me a lot. In what ways? Um, like work. So I told myself I don't want to work in corporate. But I'm like, am I saying this because I don't want people to look at me, stare at me? Because I've seen how people react when they see me in public. Like sometimes people have like a frown on their face. Like and they don't even notice that they are looking at you with a frown on their okay. face. And then so like they realize that okay, someone is looking at me and I'm like looking at them, I'm like, now smile. And yeah. then they still have a frown on their face. Sometimes people don't want to attend to you because they think that you're going to affect them or infect oh. them with, sorry, infect them with this. Like, because they don't know what it is. Yes. Yeah. And people don't want to, like, hang around you. People don't want to, like, touch you. People wow. just, you can tell body language. Like, they move yeah. aside and mm. things. And it's sad. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Truly Talkative Podcast. I'm your host, Eno Craigwin. I thought I knew you like 100%. 98%. What is this? <laughs> there's a reason for everything, but there's not a justification for everything. No, let me, let me ask God <laughs> where I'm coming from. <laughs> that day is like I'm playing and they come here. Come here. Yes, you <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to Truly Talkative. If you've still not subscribed, what are you waiting for? Go subscribe right now. If you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, welcome back. So today my guest is Ruth Jisa and we'll be discussing living with the LIGO. So for a lot of people, I'm sure this is the first time they're ever hearing this word. What does what 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 is this? What is vitiligo? Okay, to the best of my knowledge, mm-hmm. I know it's like losing your melanin. Okay, and it's an autoimmune disease. Okay, where like your your melanin is being attacked, your mm-hmm. actual skin tone is being attacked, mm-hmm. so you get like white patches all over your skin because okay. you have a weak immune autoimmune system. Ah, yeah, basically. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So you're going to take us back, mm-hmm. okay? I want to know, like, were you born, um, lose, like, had you already lost a bit of the melanin when you were born, or was it something that progressed over time? So the first time anyone noticed this was my uncle, and this was in Genesis 2, 3-ish. Oh. I was never born with it. Okay. Yes. So okay. just as two, three-ish, my uncle noticed, like, the, I don't remember where the patch was. Okay. And then he told my mom about it. And then they thought I was like, you know when you're a kid and you don't bath? Like, what's that thing called? Is it a crow? Uh, yeah, like, eczema. Eczema. Eczema yeah. crow. They call so, it crow. It's yeah. true. So they thought that was what was happening to me. So they're like, go and bath. Like, I was like, I bath. So, yeah. How come? But it wasn't, it was lighter. Okay. Like, it starts on a lighter note. Yeah. Then as it progresses, mm-hmm. then it becomes, like, brighter. And, and so that's when they knew that something was off, like, yeah. Okay. And I just don't remember where exactly it started. Like, I don't know whether it was my thigh. I, I don't really remember. Remember, yeah. yeah. So this was just as two. Yeah, two, three-ish. Because when I look at, like, my childhood pictures... Mm-hmm. I see it from Genesis 2, 3-ish. More Genesis 3, yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. that's why I noticed okay. it. So, um, how many are you in your family? We are three. You're three. Like my siblings. Yeah, your I'm, siblings. Yeah, three. You're three. So, yeah. you are the first born. Yes, I and, am. The, and then you have... A... My sister, then my brother. Okay. Yeah. None of them have it, Ligo. No one in my family, both on my mom and my dad's side, no one has it. So, I'm the only one who has it on both sides of the family. Okay. Was this something you were ever familiar with? Had you seen it anywhere? Never in my life. Like, I didn't even know it was a thing. Like, okay. I, I, I didn't okay. know. Okay. My family, nobody knew it was a thing. Yeah. yeah. No, the reason why I'm asking is because the first time I ever saw it, I was a child. Yeah, there was, there was an old man in our church who had it. And the reason why I remember is because it stood out for me because in my mind, hot water had poured on him. That's why a lot of people think I go bent. So yes. I'm like, there's a difference. If you are bent, you are more on the red side. Mm. I think when I'm sunburnt, that's when, yeah, you can't uh-huh. tell. But I put a lot of sunscreen, so I, like, yeah. yeah. But then I think if you are bent, bent, you see like you're red, like pink-ish. But right. this one is like white. White, just, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I thought hot water had poured on him and I felt so bad for him for years, <laughs> honestly. So what are some of the misconceptions that like, this has come with, I'm sure. <laughs> so many. Hot water, mm-hmm. gas, the explosion. I remember in, so I went to Ashesia first. And okay. then 
there's this um Christian female group, like I mean it's a Christian group, but then the female section had this meeting and they used to have it in Achimota, if I'm correct. Okay. I remember one of the leaders thought I had leprosy. What? In my head I was like, Isn't leprosy <laughs> like and she was like, Why are your nails? And oh I was like, and she gosh. said it. It was so like out there. So everybody was looking at me and I was like shy. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, people think I have that. Yeah. I've had people call me names. And I'm like, yeah. People that are closer to you mm-hmm. who call you names. Wow. And then you're just like, you smile and then you're like, oh, okay. Or sometimes like when it gets too much, they tell them that no. I've had people call me a cow. Wow. Yeah. There's someone who like still works in, with my dad. He used to call me multi kutuji a lot like so he he hardly called me my name so that was his name for me oh, no. so he was like hey multiple to jay come call your father multiple to jay this 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 yeah oh no at that time i didn't know like how bad that was so when i grew up i was like oh wait this man actually called me this yes. yeah so now i was like annoyed at the fact yeah. that like i'd made that go on for that yeah, yeah yeah and how about your parents like how did they react to you the name calling because this was a man who was closest to you i mean close to your dad my parents don't know about i don't tell i didn't tell them ah, like they, they don't know like okay i don't tell them these things i just endure them if they hear it yet yeah, they react mm. but i don't remember a time where they ever heard it that someone called me a name or like no yeah. Right, like they would right. have reacted. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so how, like, how, how much did it spread? Like, I'm, I'm looking at your, so, your, yeah, yeah your... so, and I can say, uh, I came to Ghana. Like I said, I came to Ghana in 2020. I did school outside Ghana and everything. Okay. So all that time, I didn't see this, but when I came to Ghana, then like. Okay, let's 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 move in steps. So okay. take me back a bit. GSS two, you've started to see a bit. Yes. Yeah, so and I then mm-hmm. on my cheek. Okay. Then my knee. Okay. Then my elbow. Okay. That was it. Okay. Okay. Yes. And it was just like you know, I'm sure I'm sure it was like dots. Like it wasn't. It was yeah, like this it was, whole spot. So let's use this as an example. Okay. Like this. Yeah, and okay. then my knee started to go. Okay. Then my face. It was then it started spreading on my face. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Then, oh, so it's spread on your face now. This this is makeup on your face. Yeah, but right now it's gone, like my face. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I'll explain okay. that. Okay. So yeah, and then my mm-hmm. elbow started spreading. Okay. Started spreading. Then I started seeing it on my fingers. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So okay. this was like from so GSS two. I'm guessing you were about what like yes, yeah. thir- for thirteen fourteen. Yeah, thirteen fourteen. Then. Thirteen fourteen. Yeah. Till 2020, you said it was till 2020. Was yeah, when because it got... in uni, I did So, the funny thing is that uni, I didn't even notice it that much, even in Genesis. Like, I saw it, but then it wasn't there, okay? So, I was like, okay, cool, like it's one of those things, right? When I went to uni, I didn't really pay attention much to it because probably because of the people around me. Wait, were you in uni in Ghana or in the US? I did uni in some parts of uni in Ghana, okay? So I think the circle I had, the people I had around me, my circle of friends, did it make me feel weird about it? That was a good thing. Yes. So I'm very grateful for my friends, the friends Mm -hmm. I had. And everybody acted normal, like they treated me normally. Like those who know me treated me very normally. Yeah. So to me, like I was normal, like everyone else. Yeah. Then I left Ghana, continued the rest of my uni outside. Super normal. Nobody even cared. Hmm. I could wear any clothes that I could, like, I want to wear. If it's summer, I'll wear my shorts. I'll wear my summer dress. I didn't even, like, you could hardly even see it. Yeah. Then I moved back to Ghana. And this was in 2020? Yes. COVID, okay. And then, I one other thing about vitiligo, my vitiligo, like, in this mm-hmm. case, is that it spreads when I'm stressed out a lot. Okay. I noticed okay. that when I get stressed out, a new patch appears. Right. Yes. And then I realized I started getting stressed a lot. 2020, 21, 22. Okay. I was super stressed. What and do you care to share why you were stressed? Or oh, this is, you want to keep this private? My family. Okay. I think most of my stress came from family. Okay. But they don't know that. That's the funny thing. They mm. don't know that. Yeah. So family. Then the fact that like life, yeah, life and was life in <laughs> exactly. So there was that, yeah. And then yeah, so like those were my two, the two main factors, like family and life in general. Mm. So I started noticing that I started spreading like all over, yeah. And I mean, I'm trying to do things to control the stress, but it's like 
today you are controlling your stress levels and then the next day someone has come to do something or say something to you yeah. and you're like why why your stress like spikes mm. everything yeah so yeah so it was okay so then it continued and then it, it visibly got worse yes you know around like 2020 2021 yes. yeah. did it impact your relationships like i'm talking about romantic relationships and things like that anyway so it's so funny because um if anyone wants to date me mm-hmm. the first thing which i don't believe the first thing they say is that oh the vitiligo attracted them to me in my head i'm like no Hello. for some people i'm I'm guessing it's a fetish really yeah for some people it's a fetish yeah i i just found it weird i was like <laughs> please let's be serious no wow yeah and in my head i also used to get scared about the fact that okay if a relationship progresses and then we had to meet your parents how are your parents going to accept me i think it's accept someone looking like this so it made me get scared about like marriage the thought of marriage like was not like was so far-fetched for like yeah. for me i didn't want to like get married because i was scared that someone's mom would say that no we don't want a diseased girl in our family wow. so i was really i mean i like i would want to get married one day but then the thought of having someone's parents say something mean something that my parents haven't said to me to me mm-hmm. was like mm. I am. I'd rather not get married. Yeah. Have you experienced that so far? No, because nobody made me meet their parents. So yes. Okay. So okay. 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 Yeah. okay. Yeah. And uh, again, let's let's take it back mm-hmm. um, to growing up. Okay, school, your teachers, like things like that. Did you have any? I mean, do you have teachers name calling? Did you have none? You didn't, you didn't experience no, anything I, like that. One of my teachers of blessed memory, Mister Fair. He was like one of my best teachers, math teachers. I mean, I wasn't that great in math, but like, he was like, he would call me. He could tell, and it's so funny because none of my friends could. I don't know if they ever saw me being nervous about it, okay. like growing up. But you know, there are some adults that can tell that oh, this child is shy because of this reason and that. So he called me. Like there were times where he would call me and tell me that Ruth. You are unique. Like, I remember clearly, he was like, I'm unique. And he would tell me why I'm unique, that I'm different. Like, have I seen anyone with this before? Mm. And I'm the only one. That should tell me that God loves me. Like, yeah. like you, he was the, like, so many words of affirmation. Yeah. 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 He was the only teacher that I can clearly remember who said these positive things to me. But then my other teachers never treated me like, oh, this girl, no, 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 no. They didn't okay, do that. Okay, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. And, and how... vocally, he was the only teacher who like said positive things to me to okay. make me feel better. Mm. Yeah. How about your parents? Like, did they even have a talk with you about it? Were they even well informed when it came to it? So eventually when my parents found out what it was, I mean, they'll call me to their room and they'll tell me that, it's unfortunate this has happened, but I have to be, con- my dad is, my dad is a very confident person, okay. very, very confident. So he's like, you have to be confident. You have to, you don't have to let people put you down, that kind of thing. But I remember that there were times where I talked to myself a lot. Okay. Yeah. I'm not crazy or anything, but yeah. I, because yeah. my parents are not people that you can sit down and talk to you about what, what's going on with you. Oh God, no. They are not people that you can do that with. Yeah. But when they want to talk to you, your heart is racing because you're like, are you in trouble with this? But then they'll tell you that. Even my dad telling me that I have to be confident is like an argument. You have to be confident. You have to do it. I'm like, hey, God, I beg. Like, say it in a soft manner. Yeah. Like, like, I know that, yes, I have to be confident. But I'm like, you have to be confident. You have to do, don't let people. That, you know, mostly my dad tells me I'm not confident because of the vital I go. Uh, he tells me that, that he knows I'm not conf- a confident person because of that. My mom will cry when she sees me crying. Mm. And I don't cry in front of my parents. I okay. cry in my room. Oh, oh God, I'm getting wished off. No, it's fine. It's fine. Oh, I cry outside of the house, yeah. something like that. And then... Um, so sorry. 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 No, it's fine. I have tissue. Um, um, he's getting tissue. I'm so sorry. Yeah, he's getting yeah. tissue. Tissue, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah, so... um, What... My mom will cry. Yeah. I'm crying. Yeah. Yeah. And she'll be like, um, she didn't give birth to me like this. I wasn't born like this. And so I shouldn't feel bad about it, but she gets it. And that one day it will go 
like I mean devotion time to pray to pray for me my dad prays for me I remember one time this was a long time ago um, we were outside the house and there was this person uh, let me just say a mentally deranged person mm-hmm. was walking by and then they came closer to the house and then the person was like your dad is a pastor and he can't even pray for his daughter to get healed of. And it was so weird because this is a, like, dirt, like, dirt, wow. like, so we're like, is this an old church member? Is this so, like, it was yeah. just a weird reason. And my dad was like, hey, get away. And like, there were people around, some guys around. So like, they had to let the person go and everything. So like, does this person know us? And then now it made me think, I was like, yeah, that's true. My dad is a pastor. He prays for people to get better. But his daughter is not getting better. Hmm. Is it that God doesn't? listen to his prayers when it comes to his child, his own child, mm. you know? I was like, so it made me question a lot of things that, okay, what's God actually doing in regards to this? And I tell myself that I don't know how long I'm going to have this, but whatever the case is, God should just use it for his glory. That's why I always, yeah. like, that's when I started telling myself this, that mm-hmm. God just use it for your glory because I'm a very shy person. And I don't know if I'm, like, I've been conditioned to be shy because of the skin, mm. like, condition. Yeah. I don't know if that's why I think or believe I'm a shy person. So I'm like, this thing has limited me a lot. In what ways? Um, Like, work. So I told myself I don't want to work in corporate. But I'm like... Am I saying this because I don't want people to look at me, stare at me? Because I've seen how people react when they see me in public. Like, sometimes people have, like, a frown on their face. Like, and they don't even notice that they are looking at you with a frown on their face. And then, so, like, they realize that, okay, someone is looking at me. And I'm, like, looking at them. I'm, like, now smile. And then they still have a frown on their face. Sometimes people don't want to attend to you because they think that you're going to affect them or infect them with, sorry, infect them with this like because they don't know what it is yes yeah and people don't want to like hang around you people don't want to like touch you people just you can tell body language like they move aside and Mm. things and it's sad but i'm like yeah because i was going to find i was going to ask you how were you before vidligo and after vidligo like what what Mm. was yeah do you remember what what you were like personality wise childhood um, I was very, uh, very outspoken. Sometimes I think I'm outspoken with my parents. Yeah. I was very outspoken as a kid and very active, like tomboyish, very active, like our friends. I was giddy giddy as a child, but now I'm more reserved. Mm. Yeah. Very reserved. I'm only outspoken with my closest circle. Okay. But then for the most part, I'm very reserved. Yeah. Right. I hardly, and then. My parents are past like my dad is a pastor. I remember when we were kids, my mom used to say, Pastor's children do go to the mall. <laughs> what? Like <laughs> it was one of the funniest things I'd ever heard in my life. I was like, I don't understand. Why Yeah. So I was thinking that maybe their time, the mall, the cinema, how it uh, was in their time. Ah, that's how uh-huh. it's so So view she's it. thinking maybe it's like that. But then we are progressing. Yes. And she constantly said that pastor's kids don't go to the mall, pastor's kids don't go here. We couldn't go to our friend's house. Even if we like, were allowed to go, like there was a certain time we were supposed to come back home. Our friends were not allowed to come to our house. If they come, they'd be like, why they come to our house? This, this, this. So it's like, I grew up not wanting to hang out with people. Mm. My friends want to hang out with me, but I'll make so many excuses not to go out. Because, mm. number one, my parents will always talk. I don't know if they were doing that to protect me. Mm. Yeah, but then... I just grew up not wanting to go anywhere again. Yeah. Like, I'd rather stay at home. It's fine. Like, at home, I'm safe. I can get food to eat. Like, I, I know how to entertain myself. Like, mm. I love series a lot. So, I'll pa- like probably do that that yeah. go out and be in the sun i have to put on sunscreen mm. yeah because when you have this you have to put on a lot of sunscreen because okay. when you're sunburned i see that like i get new patches when i'm sunburned oh. too so and i don't want to go through all that process so i'd rather stay at home yeah but then i realized that when i'm at home too then you have your parents they're always talking in your ears you don't go out and in my head i'm like people don't even make us go out then, yeah like, we have a care for you even at our age so like by seven you have to be in the house Wow. At my age, by seven, I have to be in the house. My dad would call, call, call. My sister is like, 
when she goes out, she blocks the ana- <laughs> no, sorry. She blocks the announcement. Yeah. Yeah. Or turns off, but she mostly blocks the announcement. Yeah. Like, don't call her because she wants to have fun. She wants yeah. to enjoy life. Yeah. Why are you coming to like sit on her happiness? Yeah. Mommy, I'm scared because I'm the firstborn. So I'm like, hey, don't call me. So where are you? Why are you coming home? This, this, this. So I'm like, do you know what? I'm just going to avoid it. You have to be an, like a living example. Yeah. Yeah. So your parents were strict regardless. It has it has yep. nothing to do with if it's like go or no, what no, whatever no, people no. would say, judge right. like it was just they are strict. They are strict. Yeah. And that has to do with your dad also being a pastor, I'm yes, guessing. I so, so. Yeah. you have to live like an upright, uh-huh. you know, you know, you have to be a, a good example in mm-hmm. church and then also for them, because you know African parents, it's usually make sure that people don't you don't disgrace the family, you know. My mom always said <laughs> I have stories for this. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes, yes, go on. Okay, so like I said, um, so in 2020, my sister got married. Mm-hmm. And then I had like this whole dress situation where um, they were making a dress for me. Okay. And I was in quarantine because I'd come to Ghana. Okay. And that was during COVID era. Okay. So everybody had to be in quarantine for like two weeks. Okay. And then um, I told them that whoever is making the dress, they should bring the dress to wherever I was. Mm-hmm. So at least I fit the, the dresses. I kept sending messages, calling, please let them bring their dresses so I fit them. Nobody did that. So on the day of the trad, mm-hmm. traditional mm-hmm. marriage, mm-hmm. Um, I wore the dress. It fit though. Um, I didn't know that the boob area was like very revealing because when I stand, you can't see anything. Okay. So I'm, I just want to take it back. So mm-hmm. you're a pastor's daughter. Exactly. Obviously, you've been told to dress decently all your life. I'm sure you have been dressing decently and that's the all thing. your life. I dress decently. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So this one time, one time. Mm-hmm. And then, um, so we had to sit down mm-hmm. where they take like with the bride and then the girls and everything. And then the, like, oh, the videos were going on, the pictures, everything was going on. And then. At some point, I saw one of the photographers giving me a shawl. I think it's called a shawl. Yes, yeah, a shawl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he was like, oh, I should cover up. And I was like, okay. So I just covered up and everything. So after the, the whole pictures and all of that, um, two of my sisters... I think, so let's take it back. So the dress that you were wearing, uh-huh. it, I mean, was ill-fitted. So yes. um, it, when you were, when you were when seated, sit, your and, boobs were exposed. Yeah. And okay. because of the movement, like you, you are dancing, you're made to dance and everything. And mind you, I'm shy because like, my skin, I know, like, I'm very aware of my skin, oh, right. so I don't want anything revealing, anything that will show, like, my skin or okay. anything. But at that time, I didn't have, like, vitiligo all over my skin, so, but then okay. I was still aware of the fact that I had vitiligo. And okay. My sister was getting married to someone who was a public figure, so, yes. like, I didn't want anything that will, like... Take the attention of them. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I get you. So, unfortunately, that happened in the sense that um, two of my sister's friends came over and they were like, oh, like in high school, they used to call me Auntie Ruth and Auntie Ruth too. And I was like, oh God, <laughs> yes. So they were like, Auntie Ruth, um, can we have your phone? And I was like, okay, sure. And I'm like, don't touch your phone. Um, um, don't look at your phone. Let's turn off your phone. And I was like, okay, that's weird. Why shouldn't I touch my phone? Why should my phone be off? And they were like, oh, nothing, nothing. But then the other one was like, let's just tell her. She'll see it eventually. I was like, tell me what. And they're like, okay, we are come to show you something. Please don't get sad. I was like, okay. And then they showed me the video where, like, you could see my boobs. So when I saw it, I was like, it's not my boobs. Like, yeah. it was all over the place. And then I went through, I was like, wait, wait, wait. Let me go through the comments. And people were saying awful things about me, like, crazy things. And then... Well, was, like, do you, do you remember some of the things that they shared? <sighs> the, uh, I know some guys were calling me a prostitute. People wow. were saying that I was trying to snatch my sister's husband. I was like... <laughs> wow please be for real yeah yeah be for real and then i i saw some people saying that oh i found out that she's the sister's um the bride's sister and does this one lady like she created a whole thread on twitter and she was like even if she's the bride's sister she's not supposed to dress like that and that this this like so they're talking about the groom my sister's husband yeah that and he should know the the company he keeps how can he have this person come to be a part of their bridal team mm. and then do disgrace them but like people insulted me i don't wow. even want to remember like they said horrible yeah. things this lady went on a rant i i i it. i'm happy you're, you're clearing the air right and i'm going to give it a chance to continue mm. but i again i would want us to to mention it just because it was a viral moment and mm. i want people to 
I mean, those who said things like <laughs> all sorts of things, I want them to, to, to eat up their words because at the end of the day, you don't know people and you don't know the stories behind some of these things. Yes. So at the time, I think the reason why this went viral was because your sister was getting married to Joe Metal and yeah. him being in the gospel space. Mm-hmm. It's, I mean, people expected a lot of decency and yeah. things like that. And this was this was something that was beyond you because I don't think mm-hmm. it could have been fixed in that moment because mm-hmm. you hadn't even tried it on before. Yeah. Um. So now moving to seeing, like, I mean, let's move on to the fact that someone on Twitter was bashing you and all that. How did you, um, how did that, how did that, hmm, how did that affect you? And how did you deal with that emotionally, psychologically and all that? Okay, so first, um, so when all this was happening, I know my sister had to leave where she was sitting and come and look for me because she was very bothered. And I think she had heard some of like, I think at that time, some of the singers saying, did he know, you see, people don't know me as my siblings' siblings. Okay. So like she heard some of them saying things about, not nice things about me. So she heard it and she said she was very pissed off. I don't know if she like told them to stop or anything but mm-hmm. then she came to look for me mm-hmm. and she was like oh joe was like how do you say i should come and check on you are you okay like he's seen what's going on mm-hmm. don't worry about it i was like okay so i didn't come out at all then now we get home and i see that my parents are not happy uh, my mom especially my mom and i don't have a very great relationship like okay. i don't really have a good relationship with my mom and then the first thing my mom says to me is I brought shame and disgrace to the family. Wow. And I thought I didn't hear her well. So I was like, eh? And then she was like, I brought, um, how can I bring shame and disgrace to their family? Look at how I dressed. And that is that how to dress as a pastor's child? And my heart was so broken because in that moment, I'm not a parent, but then I was like, something like this happens to your child. Are you not supposed to cover your child and tell her that, Oh, don't worry, like, don't mind them. We know, you, you're my parents. You know how I dress. Mm-hmm. You you know how I dress. You know this is not how I dress. Mm-hmm. So you should cover me in love, like, mm-hmm. protect me. Yeah. But then you are joining what other people are saying mm. and saying it to me. And I'm hearing it from my parents. Mm. Mm. And I was broken. I was so sad. And then I felt like I brought shame and disgrace to my sister, her wedding, and the fact that the attention was taken off them. And it was on me, and I didn't want that, especially with with LIGO. Yes. I didn't want people looking into me, like who is she? That, I didn't want any of that. Yeah. So I felt I didn't enjoy my sister's wedding. I'm so sorry. Wow. I still tell her till today, and I know she doesn't like hearing it because it makes her sad too. I I I I, I didn't enjoy the wedding. Yeah. Yeah. Because now I was hiding everywhere. I didn't want to be in. I didn't want people to notice that. Oh, she's that girl. That no. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. It really affected me. I was sad, and now I was hiding a lot at home. I didn't want to go out. So maybe somebody will recognize me and be like, "Oh, she's that girl that um oh. did this, but disgraced um these people on their wedding day." So yeah. Right. Yeah. And 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 how long did it take for you to maybe heal through that? I I don't think you are fully healed, <laughs> but how long did it did it take for um, you? I mean. I thought I'd recovered from it till um so there's this event planner mm-hmm. very very I think she's one of Ghana's good event planners Gloria Bachman yeah so she holds this like classes for people who want to learn more about event planning and okay. all of that and then I used to be her personal assistant okay so one of the classes she was having um I went over and then some of the ladies were like after like the whole prep and like I mean there was you stage a uh, uh, what those tables? Yes. Setting, yeah, you do all of that. So after that, like we're packing stuff back inside. Then some of the ladies inside were talking about weddings, and then they were talking about my sister's wedding. Wow. It, it came up as a topic of discussion because it was a very like popular what? wedding. At- Sorry, how long ago? How long after so, so it happened? So I think twenty twenty one. Oh, yeah, so a year after. Okay. Twenty twenty one, twenty twenty two. Okay. Yeah, and then um. Like one of the ladies was like, "Hey, umu sa girl no, do ko share sa tarin no, mudem ni jisha no, wanya di ni nimse." I was like, oh and then God. I had come inside, yes, and then I heard them insulting someone, but I didn't know who it was. Okay, so I was like, "Hey, why are they insulting the person like that?" And they're like, "Hey, that girl that wore that dress at Joe Metal's wedding." I was like, oh, "Never no. mind." So I went <laughs> back to continue what I was doing. Then one of my friends walked 
in and then she was like hey why are they loud like because they were loud and like we're talking you know Ghanaians women yeah. like, hey, like when they gather dramatic mm, yeah and then she was like ah but the person that they are insulting do they know that she's here with us and they were like they don't understand and then she was like the person they are insulting yes. she's in this class with us yes and they're like oh how is that possible who's that guy so I think I change a lot like oh. I can tell that I also change a lot. Sometimes people, when you look at pictures of me, mm-hmm. like I, when I gain weight, it's like I look different. Uh, when I lose weight, I look different. So it looked like as at that time I'd gained a bit of some weight. So yeah, and then the lady was like, my friend was like, um, "It's Ruth. You guys are insulting Ruth." And they're like, "Oh, Jaisa, Jawasem, <laughs> how can it be Ruth?" And they and then she showed them pictures. They're like, "Look at the girl." Yes. And I was like, they realized that oh god, it's actually Ruth. And they're like, ah, Ruth, so why are you... And then the girl, the lady who was insulting me, she was like, oh, this one day I saw you. Media, I insulted you with my family member, so... And I was like... Look at that. And she didn't even say sorry. Like, she just told me that she insulted me with mm. her family members. So I was just thinking about other people who didn't know me back then, who insulted me and said horrible things. And then now when they find out that I am me, like, oh, Ruth is the whoever that was the... They're like... I wish you could put me in your handbag and I'll go and fight, fight all your battles. <laughs> No, honestly, I'm one of those people. I love to confront <laughs> situations. Oh, like, so you never confronted them. No, yeah. I, like, I was just quiet. I was like, okay. Yeah. yeah. And so mind. so at that time you thought, oh, you know, I'm, I'm over this exactly. now. And then it resurrected all these because feelings. Of that yeah. yeah. So it's like, I feel like I've gotten over it till someone brings it up in a conversation and they still don't notice that I'm the one. Mm-hmm. And then when they find out that I'm the one, then it's like, very awkward moment yeah for each, everyone yeah same way with vitiligo if like i'm with people that didn't like let me know that oh you're weird like what's what's happening to you this 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 and i go into a space where now people are staring at me i have like i crawl back into my show i'm like okay i don't want to be here or oh, i'm quiet i'm like reserved sitting at one place talk to me I'm like, yes this and i try to hide like my hands like i try oh. i so now i wear big clothes at first, I wasn't wearing, I mean, I didn't wear, like, fitted clothes, but then I wear, like, I wore clothes that were, like, reasonable, like, nice, yeah, clothes. Yeah. But now, and when I'm at home, my mom doesn't like the idea that I'm wearing shorts, but I'm at home. Because of decency again, yeah, right? because of the vitiligo. She's like, oh. people come to the house, like a pastor's house, people come over, they'll see you. And I'm like, you are drawing my attention back to the vitiligo. You shouldn't be doing that. Yeah. And anytime I tell her that, and it's like, she wants to say something back, but then she realizes that, okay, um, what am I going to say that? I mean, you guys are complaining that I'm not co- a confident person. I'm trying to be confident in the most safest place that I can be confident. That's at home. And you are still complaining about how I dress. Like, I really love shorts a lot and t-shirts. Like, mm-hmm. I really, my dad is like, I'm always wearing t-shirts and shorts. Wear a dress, this, this, this. <laughs> And then my mom, okay, I'll, I'll try. It. Then my mom will be like, "Hey, don't wear um, short sleeve. Don't wear this. Everybody will look at." It. And I'm like, "What do you do now?" I, I've noticed something about again. I can only speak for Af- African parents, yeah. where it's almost like in their bid to protect us, mm-hmm. they, uh, I don't know, it's they they like to project a lot. So let's say there's something that they weren't com- confident with, or something they weren't comfortable yeah. growing up in their bid to protect you, they would start to like, almost like let you be afraid to be yeah. too, yeah, too open about that one thing. So let me give an example. Me for the longest time, my forehead, oh my gosh, <clears throat> it was an issue for me because growing up, my mom, no, 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 no. So if you have forehead, you can't, yeah, you can't, you, you, you can't, like don't hold a pony, please. Or like, trying like a fringe oh, right. a little bit of fr- so i have i have this hairstyle a lot of my childhood pictures i had two braids one here one here <laughs> because and i was like what was that hiding what? it was so because the forehead, the forehead is here <laughs> and it was one here one here and and that was and that was my mom that was my mom's like that was that was her her mm. i don't know her attempt at yeah. hiding my forehead yeah. and so the more she would talk about my forehead the more it would make me insecure so yep. i would be thinking about this forehead i'm like okay so weaves it's always a fringe right. yeah or you know if i don't know whatever whatever the hairstyle was i'm like okay how can i style style it better mm-hmm. so my you know my forehead yeah. isn't out there and then when i grew, when i grew older i had a conversation with her and i told her that 
you know that that thing that you did, mm-hmm. right, made me very insecure. And then I found out that, oh, growing up, she was teased about her oh. forehead. So, no, 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 no. Let me stop it right now so that she yeah. doesn't, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, you were teased, but that was not the right way. A lot of them don't necessarily have the tools to deal mm-hmm. with some of these things. I'm not excusing their behavior at all. Yeah. But I will say that a lot of them don't have the tools. Um, yeah. The intention, I've always said, I think almost every episode I've said this, that the intention is there. It's yeah. good. But the execution, but the, delivery is, the delivery is, you yeah. know, it's poor. And then it leaves the person with all these thoughts. Yeah. Um, now that I have a daughter, right, mm-hmm. I always say that I don't even, like, if you dare say one thing about her, I'm fighting you. We will dirty ourselves. No, we really will. Like, don't even <laughs> try. Like, don't even, oh, man, no, hey, don't even know. We swear to say Yeah, that. don't. Don't. Yeah. I don't want anyone messing with their confidence. Uh, um, I think two, three years ago, a, a childhood friend of mine mm. said something about my son, Drew. Okay. Said something about his forehead. Oh, no. Oh, I had to, I no, seriously, I had to dress him up in my, in yeah, my son and your mommy's side. And I'm like, you know what? That's it. I mean, I didn't even, what did I do? Was it Instagram? You, I didn't want, I didn't block him, but I did. Oh, is um, it restrict? Restrict. Okay. Yeah, because I was like, you know what? I'll block you. You can continue watching my content. Yeah, but I'll restrict But I'll restrict, yeah. Because yeah. I, I want to protect my space mm-hmm. and my kids and all that. Yeah. And I also find that just unnecessary. What is yeah. the point? What do people get from seeing someone and then pointing at something? Like, what? what is that? I, I Honestly, I really don't know. I mean, I already know what I have. Yes. I have eyes. I see it. But you, like, pointing at it, talking about it, acting weird around me, you're making me more aware of the situation. And maybe to me, I don't see it as a bad thing, no. But then now that you're acting weird towards me, now I'm like, okay, is something wrong with me? Am I, like, am I really deformed? Yes. Like, is this disability? Like, if it's a disability, is it that bad? Yeah. Like, can I not function, like... I mean, I have my hands, I have my legs, I have my mouth, I have my, I have everything. Yeah. The only thing, like, thing that's different about me is my skin tone. Mm, mm, I'm mm. healthy for the most part. Yeah. It's just my skin tone. Yeah. So, you pointing at me, what does that change? You're right. making me, because I'm shy, you're making me more shy and more aware and insecure. Yeah. So, I'm very insecure. Sometimes I don't feel like, if I like someone, I feel like I don't deserve this person to like me because of the, the life. Wow. So I'm like, okay, if I find out that another person likes the person that I like, I would rather push for that person to like the person that I like because I feel like they are more deserving of that person. Like, and like I said in the beginning, like family wise, um, their family will be more accepting of that person because they don't look funny. I feel like I look funny. Wow. Yeah. So I feel like I don't deserve good things. So I'd rather people I think deserve it, get it. And maybe if someone really likes me, I feel like they've, look beyond the floor and they genuinely like my personality mm. like character that's mm. why like they are sticking with me but then if like someone comes to me that oh ruth this person likes you or oh i like you i'm like why why do you like me what's so nice about me that like i get defensive wow. i get very just dis- like defensive yeah. because i feel like nobody can like me looking like this yeah. So then it's also a problem i mean i get that society mm-hmm. you know has done this but do you like you Hmm. To be honest, I think I am now getting to the point of actually loving myself. Because growing up, I've, my parents don't say I love you. And I realize that it's an African thing. My parents don't, they've never hugged us. Hmm. Yeah. I realize that they don't hug us. I don't even remember them ever hugging us. We've never had birthday parties before. Wow. Like things that you think that kids will have, like with their parents. And then, like the other thing is that, like I said, my mom and I are not friends. Mm-hmm. I mean, we tolerate each other, but we are not friends because my mom, like, in treat, is it? No, no, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. And I realized that because of the vitiligo, it's made me very defensive. So even if you're not saying anything in regard, like, in regards to the vitiligo, like my mom, like she's talking about something, like maybe she told me to do something, I didn't do it. And then like she would start like shouting at me. And my mom, she's good at insulting. Like she would insult you, like insult you. So yeah. like, yeah. in my head, what's this wife? <laughs> do you have to insult? So yeah. 
The insults also make me feel less of a person and very insecure and not confident. But the thing is that they don't know this. You see where you said that you, you at some point, you had to talk to your mom about mm-hmm. your daughter. My sister can't, my brother and my sister, they, they are very confident. They can't tell my, but me, who am I? Wow. I mean, I'm the oldest, but then it's like when um, my mom does something that's not good and I call her out on it, she insults me. Mm. I can't say what she would say. Yeah. 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 But there's one thing that my mom said that stuck with me for a very long time. I'm so sorry to hear that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, she was like, oh, I'm the cause of all her problems in the world. Wow. And she said this at a very young age, but she said it three times. Hmm. At that time, I didn't understand what it was, but I knew it wasn't a good thing to say. Yeah. And I remember I told my sister, growing up, I told my sister about it. And she was like, oh, don't let this thing worry you. You know that maybe she was angry. But then I was like, you know, with siblings, everyone's experience with your parents is very different. But I feel like my siblings don't get it. Like, they don't get it. They feel like because you're the oldest, you should understand and endure certain things. I'm like, no, it affects me. Like, my character is different. My personality is different from your personality. Mm-hmm. My sister, she's like, it passes here, it goes out. And then she doesn't let things get to her. That's my sister. She doesn't yeah. let things get to her. Yeah. My brother is, you tell me, I'll tell, like, I'll tell so it to you. And then whether you take it or not, I mean, I've said my mind. Yeah. I've said my piece. Me. I'll keep it inside. Mm. It will marinate. <laughs> I'll become emotional. Yeah. And then one thing about me is that I give, like, silent treatment. Yeah. Yeah. I will take myself out of the equation completely. I'll be, I won't talk to anybody. And my dad will be like, You, you have a bad heart. Your heart, no. eh? You're always angry. And I'm like, You guys, it's the things you say. Yeah. The things you do. I want to address it. But when I'm addressing stuff, I realize that I get very emotional. And then it's like, Look at here, look at here. Like, it's like they taunt you with, like, how emotional you are getting. Mm. So it's like, now you can't really put your words across to them. You can't tell them how you feel because if they don't insult you, they'll laugh at you or they'll tell you that, oh, get away, this thing. And in my head, I'm like, we can't, I can never talk to my parents and tell them that this and this is what you did. Because like I said, in 2020, I, like I, was, I got very stressed out because of home, like, because I had to look for a job too when I came to Ghana. I didn't do national service because mm-hmm. I didn't like complete my uni year. So, um, when I came straight, I went to work with this private architectural company. I didn't do anything architecture okay. related. So, um, but then I happened to be the PA of one of the the architects and all of that. And it was a very intense atmosphere. I was always sick. Like, I'll get sick before going to work. Okay. Because, like, my boss was very demanding. She was like, she claims she's not a micromanager, but everyone was like, yeah. She's a micromanager. She kept firing people too. So like, I got scared that will I get fired? Will I? And then eventually, it happened to oh. me. So like, I really like every day I'm sick before I go to. When work. you say sick, what do you mean? Like your tummy will be hurting. You are nervous. Mm. You you don't know what the next like thing is going to be. Yeah. What she's going to say? Like she was very harsh too. But then when she's there, she's nice. And then like my parents were excited that oh I've gotten a job when I came to Ghana. Like that was the first job I got. So but they were excited. But then when I lost that job. It was like, hey, now what are you doing at home? Like, it is, it is. so yeah. I got super stressed out. And I can't tell my parents that your words stress me out. The way you act, like, relate to me stresses me out. Like, to be like, what am I? My dad is like, what are you always thinking about? And I'm like, think about you guys. Yeah. You relate to us. I can't tell you, you guys are the cause of my stress because that's going to be a whole different story altogether. Yeah, because I was going to ask you, why not? Why do you feel you can't? My parents never gave us room as kids to address how we felt with them. It's like, my mom always said this thing to me that if my siblings ever do anything bad, mm-hmm. she's always going to blame me. And in my head, I'm like, if they kill someone, are you going to blame me? She's Why? Like, she's Because I'm the oldest. Mm-hmm. And they learn from the oldest. But there are so many things my siblings have done that I found out years later. And you had no hand in. Like. Yeah. So like I have like extra piercings. My siblings had piercings. We, I had my first piercing at 27. Mm. But for some reason, my mom thinks I'm the reason why my siblings. I'm like, um, do you know where your kids had pierced? Me? I had it when I was 27 though. Yeah. So it's like, she's like, whatever they do, if it's bad, I'm going to blame you. 
So it's like, I don't enjoy, number one, being a firstborn child. I don't enjoy the fact that I have vitiligo because, yeah, my parents don't make me feel weird about it, but I wish that they spoke to me more about it. Like, mm-hmm. we had, like, a family conversation. We talked about it. That What can you do? Even, like, my mom, she's very health conscious. So, um, and I don't really like eating. When I'm oh. sad, I don't eat. I wish I had that When problem. I'm angry, I don't eat. <laughs> Yeah. So she knows she knows this that I don't eat like I don't touch food in the house like I can go like days without eating I know it's wow, bad. Wow, that's terrible. Yeah. No. Then she's like, you don't eat healthy. That's why the vitiligo is not going. And I'm like, no, that's not it. Mm. And they're very harsh with their words. So I don't enjoy the fact that I have vitiligo. I don't like it at all. At all. I feel like if I didn't have it, it would solve a lot of problems for me, and probably maybe I'll move further in life that's what i think you feel and like then, it's stopping you yeah, from achieving like, your dreams yeah. wow. but then someone will say that i'm making an excuse for myself because people don't have legs people don't have hands mm. but then they are doing a lot for themselves but i feel like everyone's story is different exactly like it's also a psychological thing exactly yes so everyone is different exactly i don't enjoy being firstborn i keep telling people that i don't enjoy being a pastor's child sorry to my parents but I don't enjoy being a pastor's child. It's so, it's like such a burden. I have to deal with that. I have to deal with being a firstborn. I have to deal with it. Like, oh, how I act so that my parents will not think that, like, my mom is con- always concerned about what people will say. Mm. Always concerned about that. And me, I don't want to be concerned about that. Yeah. Like, I don't care. Yeah. But now it's like, I have to care. Yeah. Because my parents, care. or one parent cares. My dad, he is like, no. Build your confidence. But my mom's like, she's always nitpicking yeah. on me. So I'm like, I feel like I don't enjoy life. Mm. If I do enjoy life, it's just like maybe 25%. Yeah. Or 30%. Let me not give you 25%. It sounds so bad. but yeah. <laughs> No, I want you to speak your truth. I mean, if yeah. it's 25%, yeah. And that is what it is. But then, funny enough, on social media, people think I'm bubbly. Yeah. Yeah, I'm happy. Yeah. I remember one time in school, like, I was super, de- I was depressed for two years. My parents don't know this. Mm-hmm. I remember one time, my mom called me. I went to school. I didn't wear, have my winter jacket, nothing. I was very depressed. Went to class, took a, an exam, came back, no winter jacket. Like, I was lost in thoughts and I was crying too. Yeah. Then one of my friends who also happened to be my roommate, she was going to school. She was going to campus. So she saw me and she was like, wait, 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 wait where's the wind? Like she was yeah. concerned. She was like, is everything okay? Because it was really snowing. And then, then it, it dawned on me that, okay, wait. Then I realized that, okay, now I'm cold. Yeah. Yeah. And then I was like freezing. Like what, too much on my mind. What was causing the depression at the I time? I think, oh, oh uh, yeah. Some boy, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was a heartbreak. Yeah. yeah. It was just like, even lasted for like three weeks because according to him. So, um, my tuition, we had started a semester and then um, we couldn't find my, my money. Like, Echobank had oh. to do the transaction and everything. But then Echobank delayed. So, but I realized that I had paid okay. my tuition on the system. It showed that I had paid. But then the, it's the registrar, they realized that the money hadn't come. And then my dad called me. That, you know, I feel like parents, they sometimes they should calm down. <laughs> when you are stressed out, I feel like your child also get like panics. Yeah, yeah. So my dad was like, that plenty money. Hey, gonna see this. Do you know how to work for it to, to, to do? Like, so now I panic. I was like, oh my God, oh my God, my dad is going to kill me. Where's the money? Like, I paid my fees. I don't know. Uh, panic. And then the person I was dating us at that time, like he was in my space too much. And then I was like, I think I yelled at him that like, and I told him that this is what was going on. Mm-hmm. But, like, he was still in my space. Yeah. And then I yelled at him. And he had an older sister then who was, I think she was doing her PhD or something. Okay. And he's very close to her. So he told her that Ruth yelled at me, blah, blah, blah. In my head, I was like, why are you telling you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then she told him that if she's going to, like, girls, I don't know. I think they're very traditional. She was like, if she's going to yell at you and everything, just break up with her. Kids told me that. Wow. My sister said that I should break up with you. And I was like, and I, and I said, I don't care. At that time, I said, I don't care. Because I'm looking for my money. And my dad too is on my neck. Yeah. Yeah. So when everything was sorted out, then I realized that, oh, wait, I said something mean to this person. And then he was like, no, you did this, that, that, that. But I didn't even remember I did these things. Yeah. Because in the moment, I was like, upset i was looking at it then like other things happened like after the breakup that was very 
like I, I can't see but yeah then, yeah and then I got I fell into like depression for two years and then wow two like, years yeah then when my friend saw me as at that time then my mom called me so my friend was with me like we're still talking we're trying to get back into the apartment mm-hmm. and then my mom called me and she's like she just felt like she has to call me and I started crying and I was like I don't know what is wrong with me but just pray for me mm. I just told her that she pray for me and then she was like I remember her prayer she was like dear god i don't know what ruth is going through you're the only one who understands what she's going through and what's happening to her just touch her heart and heal her and then that was it okay and i started cry- i was bought, like crying yeah. and crying and crying and then that was the first time i ever felt like loved mm. by my mom like, oh even though she doesn't she didn't know what it was i felt loved by her yeah but then after that Back to but, factory, factory reason. <laughs> wow. So, yeah. And and I want to talk about the positives. Like, what are yeah. some of the great things that have come out of you having Vitiligo? My friends. Yeah. Okay. I have an amazing set of friends. Like, they make me feel like I belong. Mm-hmm. They don't look up, they don't look down on me. Mm-hmm. So that's one of, like, the, pos- the, the people it brought my way. So my mm-hmm. friends. Mm-hmm. And then... What else? What else? What else? Um. Well, I saw I saw a photo of you, um, hi on Hyatt's page. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah you did a jewelry. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I wore one of like two of the rings, and then I posted a picture and I tagged um Koi. Okay. And then she saw it, and then she sent a DM that mm-hmm. oh like I have regardless of the vitiligo, everyone tells me I have pretty nails, and it's true. Like, so these are your real nails. Um, yeah, so gel builder. So oh, like, yeah. Okay. So everyone tells me I have pretty nails. Yeah. And I, that I know that I have very pretty yeah. nails. So I was like, oh, imagine not having vitiligo. I'm like, oh my God, oh. like, yeah. So sometimes I think of a life without vitiligo <sighs> and how I'll actually look like and all of that. Mm. And so, yeah, so with that, then she was like, oh, I'm like, oh, I don't mind modeling for them. And she was like, oh, yeah, she was actually considering that. And then that's how it happened. Aww. So I ended up modeling for. Yeah, no, the, the photos were like, <laughs> no, seriously, like beautiful, like out Thank of this you. world, beautiful. And I love how intentional you are about um, about your page. The the, the yes. other page, I think you have a, you have two pages, right? Yes. So to love and to hold. And then my name, um, Jisa. Yeah. G- okay, yeah. okay, okay. Why did you create that page that, to love and to hold? So I wanted a page where I could be free. Okay. I could, like, I didn't even care if I had, if I had one follower. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wanted that because right now we live in a world where people are concerned about likes, how I look perfect. And it, and I was like, I just want a page where I can talk about anything. Yeah. But like, let me build it up, like, first with my faith. Yeah, okay. because I know I'm Christian, but my Christian walk has been wobbly. Okay. You know, there are days where I don't read my Bible. Mm. I can go with this, but because I'm in the pastor's house, you have to pretend like you're reading your Bible. Mm-hmm. Like you have to pretend you're praying. You have to like you have to pretend about yeah. a lot of things. So I just wanted a page where people were able to relate. It doesn't matter if you have it like oh, you can just relate to the page. I wanted something free and it didn't matter if my friends followed me or not. I just wanted different people mm. to who could relate to anything that I spoke about. Yeah, right, on right. that page. Okay, yeah, so okay. that's why I made it. I'm very private, but I made it public so that, like, yeah, yeah. you can. But okay. if I see that it's going sideways, the wow, yeah. please don't because <laughs> that then no, the page yeah. is it's like carefully curated. I love it. Thank um, you. you also spoke about the face, how you cleared it. How okay. did you? So, um, when I went to the US, um, one of my aunts, mm-hmm. um, she knows someone who had vitiligo okay. and he was on trial medication. Okay. So, Vitiligo doesn't have a cure. Okay. But there are certain foods and lifestyle choices that sh- you have that could reduce it. And okay. I've I've seen people who had had like Vitiligo gone completely. Okay. Yeah, you will not even know they had it. Okay. So that's where I'm at now. I'm trying to manage it. So I'm trying to do things that will not make me stress out so much. Okay. So, oh, my phone is not here. So I'll show you a picture. Yeah. Um. So um. My aunt was like, oh, now I'm not in school again. I'm not working in the U.S. again. So I don't have a social security and I don't have insurance. So mm-hmm. I can't be on the trial, ah, like the whole trial thing that they do. Like I can't be on it. So I have to come back to school, like do school. So that's what one thing I'm doing, like okay. applying to go back to school again. Okay. So if I get on into the system, then I can go to the hospital. I'll hear the same thing. There's no cure for vitiligo and everything. But 
we have this child testing that we are doing for people with vitiligo and okay. all of that. Okay. So whoever she knew who had it, mm-hmm. um, had like the drug, like a new one. So she told me to try it. I was like, is that not illegal? So like, <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's for vitiligo, but then yeah. is that not illegal? Because yeah. I'm not on the testing yeah. and everything. She's like, well, let's try it under G. Like, yeah. let's just do it under G and all of that. So I started applying it on my feet. Oh, it's like a cream? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, oh, it's like yeah. okay. Okay. And uh, so there's one that was using in Ghana. It's called Protopic. It's very small but super expensive. Okay. And it burns me a lot. Mm. Okay. So I'm like doubling up on sunscreen because mm. it really burns. Mm. It's very harsh on my skin. Okay. And then like I turn red, but wow. with the other drug, as nothing happens to me. Okay. And she said it took a year for that person to have his vitiligo gone. Okay. But when I started using it. I noticed that like the second or third week, I started noticing like brown spots popping up on okay. my face. Okay. Yeah. I, I noticed that they were popping up, popping up. Yeah. And then like I was like, okay, this thing is working. So morning and evening. When I started medication, I'm not consistent. Mm-hmm. But because I wanted this, ah. I became consistent. Okay. So I was using it morning. I was religious about it. Morning. Evening, mm-hmm. morning, evening. Then we, my friend and I, we started noticing this, but so we're documenting it. Okay. So I'm sending her pictures and everything. Then like I had like a big patch on my nose, like the bridge of my nose, okay. my cheeks. I shouldn't have more makeup, like you see it. Yeah. But I have pictures. Gone. Wow. So my aunt was like, hey, then this one, you have to come back. You know, like I said, people didn't even like the idea that I was coming back to Ghana. Mm-hmm. And, all that. and it's true because I realized that when I'm outside Ghana, mm-hmm. I'm more of myself. Right. I'm free. I think, well, I'm more productive. Okay. But in Ghana, I'm not productive. Yeah. Like, too yeah. much is happening in my head. Mm-hmm. Too much is going on. People are talking in my ears. Mm-hmm. There's your parents. Then there are people who are expecting the most out of you. Too much is happening. Yeah. So I'm now stressed out about it. But outside, I'm not stressed out. Like, living. Yeah. I'm doing the things I love to do. So I was like, okay. So we noticed that it was working for me. Mm-hmm. And then that helped. So now I'm forcing myself to go back so that like I can be on the child testing. Yeah. So I wish I could mention the name of the drug, but no, I don't. Yeah. I yeah. Can't do that, so, yeah. 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 So, okay. Yeah. Um I guess my last question to you is is there anyone with vitiligo out there that inspires you? <laughs> like, or for you it's just like, no, you would yeah. rather you didn't even have it. So I remember, like, when, like, I mean, my friends know I have vitiligo, but then mm. there were, like, two of them that sent me Winnie Hello. Yeah, I think that's... Like, she's, like, she's the one. <laughs> I be, I don't follow her. I be, she's the most, like, she's the poster child for vitiligo. I'm she like, is. Okay, yes, but... It didn't do I, anything for you. Uh, no, nah, mm. it, it really didn't do much. So in my head, so for the other page, I was like, okay, do you want, do, everyone knows Winnie Hello. In Ghana, I know that there are people with vitiligo. They don't come out. I've seen some people with vitiligo, like young people with vitiligo. Yeah. And I, like, I just want to give them a hug. I'm like, right. guys, we will be fine. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like hoping that my page can also make them know that like, we will be good. Yeah. We will be fine. And we are normal. Yes. It's just a skin condition. It's not leprosy like the other person said. We will be fine. So yeah. I don't really have anyone that inspires me like that yeah. who has better life. I'm my own inspiration, I think. Yeah. Oh, I love that. No, I love that. I love that. Yeah, and so. I love the fact that you mentioned that you are beginning to love you, yes. you know, and you're working on yourself. Yeah. And I can't wait for you to be free. Like, I want you to be free. I really, really want that for you. Like, I want you to get Thank to a you. point where you don't think that there's anything wrong with the person yeah. who wants you, mm-hmm. you know, I just want you to get there. Yeah. So I'm so happy that you agreed to come here and share your story. Thank like you. I'm so, so <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Ruth. Yeah. And I wish you all the best. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. <laughs>